What is up you guys, welcome back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we're in the brand new 2025 Audi Q7, courtesy of Audi of Mechanicsburg in Mechanicsburg, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so, we were in this one today because the Q7 has been refreshed for the 2025 model year. Plenty of interior updates as well. And quite honestly, it has been forever since I have reviewed an Audi. So I'm quite excited to be reviewing this one today for that particular reason. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2025 Q7. First one being the 45 premium starting at $60,500. 45 premium plus which is the one we are in today starting at 64,300 55 premium for 65,800 55 premium plus for 69,600 and lastly the 55 prestige going for $77,900 and so as you can imagine with all of those different trim levels there are two different engine configurations available for the Q7 first one belonging to those trim levels with the 45 in front of them that one is powered by a 2 liter turbocharged 4 cylinder with a 12 volt hybrid system putting out 200 61 horsepower, 273 pound-feet of torque, power sent to all four wheels through Audi's Quattro all-wheel drive system, of course. Now power being sent to the ground through an eight-speed automatic, zero to 60 time, approximately 6.7 seconds, with top speed 130 miles per hour, and MPG numbers coming in at 20 in the city, 26 on the highway, taking premium unleaded fuel. But so then there is that other engine configuration, of course, belonging to those 55 trim levels. That one is powered by a three-liter turbocharged six-cylinder with a 48 volt hybrid system that one puts out 335 horsepower 369 pound-feet of torque power sent to all four wheels through an eight speed automatic zero to 60 time approximately 5.5 seconds top speed 130 miles per hour yet again with mpg numbers coming in at 18 in the city 23 on the highway taking premium unleaded fuel but so before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in our q7 did want to mention to you guys the drive modes there's a little drive select button located kind of just in front of the shifter there drive Drive modes will include off-road, comfort, auto, dynamic, and individual, adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, and all-wheel drive system engagement. So now that I've got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put the paddle shifters here to the test first, and let's see how quickly the Q7's paddle shifters are going to react for us here. All right, so I pushed the shifter back one more time. We are actually in full manual shift mode right now, and I also have it in that dynamic driving mode for the most fun, of course, and it's telling me what gear I'm in. All right, in three, two, one, go. It's okay. They're actually pretty darn decent. I am better than I expected for an SUV, that's for sure. Most SUVs have significant delays to the paddle shifters, but the Q7 did pretty darn good. So I actually don't have any issues with that. And the cool thing about having paddle shifters on any SUV really is you can also use them to do a little bit of engine braking. So if it were to be snowing out here in Pennsylvania, as it quite often does in the winter time, you can actually use the paddle shifters to do a little bit of engine braking rather than actually hitting the brakes or risk sliding off the road. So they're good for that reason as well. But Having said that, let's now give back full control to the uh, Q7 here and let's find yet another straightaway and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2025 Q7 here up to speed. All right, in three, two, one, go. There it is. Yeah, that's plenty fine. You're not gonna have any issues in merging onto the highway. Having said that, I'm curious what the other engine can fix configuration it's going to be like i can't talk because it was a little bit of a delay and i know it has a mild hybrid system which traditionally should help with that but the battery in the 45 trim levels mild hybrid system is not the same as the 55 hybrid so i'm wondering if that would be a little bit better because like i said there was a little bit of delay and of course the auto start stop system shut off at the beginning of that acceleration as well so that of course didn't help but Having said that, once you get higher up in the RPM, certainly not gonna have any issues with anything. Plenty of an acceleration to this, but anywho, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So braking actually is pretty darn good. Four wheel ventilated disc brakes, of course, do come standard, but you also get six piston front calipers coming standard, regardless of trim level. That's something you typically find on sports cars, so you gotta love that. As far as braking feel goes, 
it's great. Definitely on the firmer side of things, it does instantly bring you to a stop. So traditionally, that's what you find really with any Audi and it's no different here in the Q7. So braking feel is brilliant in the Q7 without a doubt. Then touching on suspension and handling, five link independent front and rear suspension does come standard, but if you were to go with that prestige trim level, you actually also get an adaptive air suspension. So of course that being the one that gives you the very best ride quality, but overall as far as ride quality goes in our short little test drive here today, I will say it is significantly smoother than most other SUVs that I've tested lately. So even without that adaptive air suspension, the ride quality is still plenty fine for the Q7 without a doubt. It's obvious Audi tune this thing for a very comfortable ride so absolutely no issues there as far as steering feel goes that actually surprised me it's kind of on the heavier side of things so it does instantly put you in the direction that you want to go which you guys know i always personally prefer it gives the driver a little better feeling of being in control so i'm a big fan of that as far as cabin noise goes there's something ruffling around in the cargo area right now but besides that this is an incredibly serene cabin there's almost no wind noise or uh, road noise coming into the cabin as you would expect from a luxury vehicle i guess but i'll let you guys be the judge of that i'm going 30 miles per hour right now and i got my road mic on so you tell me how the cabin noise is i think it's perfectly fine though but touching our rear visibility that is a massive rear window back there so i can see 100 perfectly fine out the back rain sensing windshield wipers do also come standard across the board you gotta love that on days like today where it is raining right now so whenever this thing detects any kind of mist or rainfall it's going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you so one less thing you got to worry about kind of like automatic headlights and for that prestige trim level a head-up display does also come standard with that one but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2025 audi q7 all right and so here she is you guys the new 2025 audi q7 refresh styling for the 2025 model year some of that includes a reworked front grille revised headlamps and some new color options actually as well so a lot of uh a lot of kind of minor but really cool changes for the 2025 model here but as always let's go ahead and start with where the q7 is made taking a look at the vin first character is the letter w which typically indicates that it is built and assembled in germany however in this case it can also also be built and assembled in Slovakia. So engine and transmission come from Hungary, final assembly point, Slovakia, in case you were curious. But starting up front, reworked gloss black front grille with the adaptive cruise control sensors integrated very nicely into the upper portion of that front grille. That looked pretty good. Bottom corners, you got front air curtains, of course, helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination. LED headlights with LED daytime running lights do come standard. You get the automatic feature along with automatic high beams. So if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams and when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there but you also do get Audi laser light with the prestige trim level so if you want the very brightest illumination at night go with that prestige trim but anyways that pretty much rounds out the front end of this one let me know what you guys think of the refresh look in the comments below but now let's go ahead and make our way to the side so we're now swinging around to the side of the q7 gloss black roof rails do come standard rear privacy glass of course as well gloss black trim on the lower portion of those front doors to tie it all together i suppose body colored side skirts and fender surrounds do come standard that's something you don't always find on suvs of course typically it's matte black side skirts and fender surrounds so i like that they're body colored in this case body colored power adjustable side mirrors do come standard they are heated with led integrated turn signals and then as far as the wheel configurations go there are so many different options here 19 inch 20 inch and 21 inch wheel designs available for the q7 so really can make it your own there but again some new wheel designs for the 2025 model year so go ahead and check out audi's website if you wanted to check out all those different options that are available now but anyways that pretty much rounds out the side profile let's now go ahead and swing around to the back all right so now since we are around to the back of this one all the way to the top body colored shark fin antenna rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just underneath of that of course rear window wiper as well LED sequential tail lights. I love that. So when you have your turn signals on, essentially looks like the LED bulbs are sliding from one side to the other. I love the way Audi has always done that. So pretty cool look, but just below it all, gloss black rear diffuser. That looks dang good. Trailer hitch is available. I wanted to mention that, of course. That goes for $750. Uh, if you were curious about the towing capacity on the Q7, it's 4,400 pounds for the 45, and then 7,700 pounds for the 55. So it depends upon that engine that you go with. But to the bottom corners there, expect Exposed 
dual exhaust outlets with either gloss black or chrome tips. I love that they're exposed because so many manufacturers are tucking away their exhaust like everything is electric these days. So love the look. But having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. All right, so now since we are around back to the Q7 here, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, there is a button on the key fob. There is also, of course, a button on the tailgate itself. And it is a power tailgate, by the way, that does come standard, so that was pretty cool. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 14.2 cubic feet behind that third row. If that was not enough space, there is a 40-20-40 split, meaning the third row does fold down. By the way, there were some buttons in the cargo area to actually fold that third row down, so that was pretty darn convenient. Bumping that up to 30.4 cubic feet then with all rows folded that is going to come in at 70 cubic feet even essentially so that is what that looks like but led cargo lighting does come standard back there you got a cargo cover there were some chrome plated tie down anchors as well love the carpeted finishes that's something that bmw and mercedes does as well so definitely a very high-end finish in the cargo area got a grocery bag hulk a little bit of netted storage kind of in the back corner on the driver's side that if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you are going to find a tire inflator kit as as opposed to the actual spare tire but then making our way up to the third row legroom that comes in at 29.2 inches for reference i'm gonna give this a shot for you guys i mean even six feet tall essentially i fit sideways only uh yeah definitely not enough legroom for an adult unfortunately pretty much the same legroom actually as my old ford mustang gt which had 29 inches so Anyways, you do have some rear cup holders back there, so I guess that was good. But then making our way up to the second row legroom, that comes in at a much better 38.8 inches. For reference, I am still an even six feet tall, so plenty of space for me in that second row. And of course, the second row does move forward and back, so if you did have third row passengers, you could essentially move that second row forward a little bit to make a little extra space for them. So. Anyways, I just wanted to mention that. Rear ventilation does come standard. You got a rear center armrest with cup holders as well. 12 volt power outlet back there, just beside that dual rear USB charging ports. Definitely was a big fan of that. Rear window sunshades, also very happy to find that as well. But I think the big kicker for me, the big surprise I should say, was the fact that you still got rear ashtrays in the second row, which is crazy. But anyways, I haven't seen those in forever. So that was kind of fun. Heated second row seats, you can get them as part of an executive package. It goes for $2,300. So they are certainly available if you wanted to spoil the rear passengers a little bit. Then making our way up to the front seats, eight-way power adjustable front seats with four-way power lumbar coming standard. Heated front seats coming standard as well, along with leather finishes. And by the way, as far as the colors go for the leather finishes, they are finished in black gray saddle brown and tan wish they would have added a navy blue or like a rich dark green i think that would be some uh, nice colors for this one as well ventilated front seats of course are available as far as seat comfort goes they were actually incredible excellent seat comfort in the q7 without a doubt one of my favorites for sure so no issues there whatsoever but then taking a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping leather wrap steering wheel does come standard and our particular steering wheel is actually heated as well so i liked that but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key it was kind of a heavy duty key i liked that finished in gloss black got the audi logo at the very bottom there the uh, lock is on top button to pop the rear hatch and the unlock is at the bottom there but it is all keyless entry with a push button start so all i'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button and so once started up first thing i want to say is there was a super cool intro sound when you first turned this thing on let me let you guys take a listen so yeah i definitely liked that full digital gauge cluster does come standard you can check out your drive modes up there there was this super cool view button on the steering wheel when you press that it essentially completely changed the look of the gauges because they're digital you of course can do that I liked the view where it was full navigation displayed basically on the whole thing with the tiny little gauge clusters in the bottom corners. I thought that looked pretty darn cool. And uh, the fact that you can get navigation up on the gauges, I thought was pretty darn cool in general. I know Audi's done that for a while now though, but of course you got outside temperature. There's how many miles you have left until you hit empty trip A, trip B. You can choose to display your radio information up there. Digital gauges are really the best for customization. So pretty much everything you could possibly imagine on the gauge cluster. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. Panoramic moonroof does come standard. You gotta love that. 
LED interior lighting for the premium plus trim level and up. So I liked seeing that in ours here. Plenty of gloss black finishes surrounding the shifter. You guys know I like gloss black finishes if you watch my videos. Um, also above the passenger side glove box and found on the doors as well. Ambient lighting, multicolor ambient lighting does come standard. It's not quite as bright as BMW or Mercedes, but it was still there and I'm glad to see it. But of course you got the dual cup holders beside the shifter there. You got electromechanical park parking brake around there as well. And a decent amount of storage within the center armrest, which is also where you can find the wireless phone charger. So in case you were curious where that was. And by the way, the wireless phone charger comes on the premium plus trim level and up in case you were curious. Also, I found some wood trim accents. I like seeing that as well. So give a little more upscale flair to the Q7, I suppose you could say. Tri-zone climate control does come standard on the Q7 with four zone climate control being optional but now let's go ahead to take a look at the infotainment screens here so we essentially got two of them the lower one though that is strictly for climate control so in case you're curious about that there's really only one infotainment screen really and that's the upper one and that is 10.1 inches it is a touchscreen display of course bluetooth and audio streaming does come standard wireless android auto apple carplay as well you gotta love the wireless technology factory navigation system of course i was checking out the weather information which said we're we're gonna have like 80s for like several days in a row. You gotta love that. Uh, you can also adjust the ambient lighting settings up there. You can increase the brightness, change the color, that kind of thing. There's some uh, themes available as well as uh, BMW, I believe, does the same thing as well. Uh, you can check out your vehicle statistics along with your radio information. So get ready, you guys. 19 speaker Bang & Olufsen premium sound system. 19 speakers is the most I think I've ever seen in the vehicle. I've seen some others with 19 speakers, but that is the top number. And Bang & Olufsen is traditionally one of my favorites. So this should be fun. Having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. Bang & Olufsen always crushes it. Let me just say that. That is in my top three favorite sound systems. Bang & Olufsen is uh, probably my third favorite. Uh, depends on the vehicle, but they do an incredible job. And no matter what vehicle they're in, whether it be a Volvo or an Audi in this case, incredible amount of bass. The clarity was pristine. That is where they crush it. It feels like you're at a concert every single time I'm in a Bang & Olufsen uh, sound system. So that was incredible. So. 100% well done. Um, that that was amazing. But and so the last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen is when you do put the Q7 in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming stated across the board. Extremely high definition as well. So you gotta love that. Also a surround view monitor to go along with that, giving you that bird's eye view, letting you know what is completely all around you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so IIHS top safety pick plus for the Q7, which by the way is the very best you can get. So basically the same as a Volvo. That is absolutely insane. You gotta love that safety rating. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard rear side impact airbags as well. Also in the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors or tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system. That's all boring at this point. But as far as the advanced safety goes, that gives you Audi PreSense basic for collision mitigation, front pedestrian detection, Audi PreSense rear mitigation, adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring system with then lane keep assist as well. So overall when it comes to my final thoughts i'm going to be completely fair about this i'll give you four pluses and four minuses how about that wonderful gauges i love the gauge clusters in audis i've definitely been a fan of them for quite a while now great safety as well you cannot beat an iihs top safety pick plus so if you want your precious cargo meaning passengers in the back to stay safe this is definitely a solid pick premium interior as well you got the wood trim accents you got all the gloss black finishes so for those reasons i was definitely a big fan also i love the design so i like the refresh design but i also love how they went with body colored accents on the exterior like the side skirts and the fender surrounds for example because most other suvs will not do that even in the luxury department that doesn't always happen and so I love that as well. So those are my four positives. And here's some four uh, room for improvements, we'll call it. Uh, the ambient lighting, I would love for that to be a little bit brighter to kind of rival BMW and Mercedes-Benz. Mercedes-Benz is the benchmark, I would say, and uh, uh, BMW is pretty darn good as well. But I do think it needs to be a little bit brighter there. 
Also, wasn't a huge fan of the uh, turbo lag, a little bit of a delay there, so I'm wondering, maybe the six cylinder engine would be a little different, but that was definitely my experience with the four cylinder. Also, unusable third row, unfortunately. Not that adults would necessarily be uh, trying to sit in the third row, but um, kids might be able to make that work. But for the most part, I would imagine in the Q7, at least that third row is going to be folded down and used for cargo space. And speaking of, the cargo capacity isn't quite as good as a lot of the competition. So if you wanted more space, 70 cubic feet really isn't all all that great there are definitely plenty of other options that give you more cargo space but having said that maybe you don't need that additional cargo space everybody's situation is different after all i'd say but that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold <laughs>